Hello, this is Barry Jones with barrysart.com with another Photoshop tutorial. Tonight we'll just be uh, experimenting a little bit with textures, blend modes, and possibly even topaz impressions. To get started, what I've done is put on a old paper type background that I custom made. And what I'll do is take a photograph that I shot in HDR and brought into Lightroom and Photoshop and did some correcting on. And we'll put a texture to this photograph using blend modes. Instead of laying the texture over the blend mode, which is the normal way that you would apply texture and then using masked and so forth to take out various portions of the photograph. What we're going to do in this particular experiment is we're going to lay the photograph actually on top of the texture and go from there. So in this particular tutorial, I'll take and hit Control A then I'll take and hit Control C. Control A selected the entire photograph. Control C made a copy of it. Now I'll bring up my paper and I'll hit Control V. And that'll bring the photograph in as a layer over the background layer. So it will be layer one. I'll then hit Control T, and what I'm going to do is crop this photograph a little bit so that it'll reach to the extents of the background by holding the Shift key and grabbing the bars on the Transform tool. I'm now holding down my left mouse key and moving it around to try to position it where I want it. And then I'll click the tick and that will save it. Okay. From here what we'll do is we'll go over to the blend modes. If you look to the right of the photograph in Photoshop, or at least that's where it is on my computer, you'll see the blend modes. They're normal, dissolve, darken, multiply. There's a variety of them that you can check out for yourself. At any rate, if you click again, you should be able to use your error keys and work through these. This would be luminosity. Tell you what, let's do it starting out at normal, and that way we'll go from the top down. Okay, now we're hitting our arrow key, and I'm hitting the down arrow. That's dissolve. Dissolve does nothing to any great extent, or at least I couldn't see it. Okay. Usually, multiply and sometimes luminosity will give you the best results. quickly, but we're going to look at multiply, which is the one you see here. And we'll go all the way down to luminosity, which is the one that we saw briefly when I first uh, went into the blend mode section. I kind of like the effect that this gives, however, it's not quite what I'm looking for in this tutorial. What I will do is go back up uh, to multiply. I'll take and put a curves adjustment layer. On the image with that 
in that multiply mode and I will hit automatic to see where the computer suggests I place the curves and actually the computer did a pretty good job so I don't think I'll fool with them too much Let's see what you can get a little brighter if you bring it bring it up some okay that looks uh, pretty good pretty good all right so we're continuing to experiment first let's go alt shift control and e which will make a layer that has combined all of our work so far and let's go into filters and we'll go down here to Topaz Labs and we'll go to Topaz Impressions. Now this is a standalone fairly new filter that Topaz came out with that actually allows you to use various filters to make your work look more like uh, fine art rather than a photograph. And you can do anything from a pencil sketch uh, to impressionistic oil painting to watercolor to pastel, whatever. It does take a while. It's a very powerful filter. It takes a while for most of the stuff to cycle, so we'll just have to bear with it. Usually you can tell us about the end of the cycle because it'll, it'll change whatever you have on the screen over usually mine changes charcoal I assume that's the default uh, and the charcoal always looks pretty good you can actually uh, do some pretty nice work what you could do if you didn't want the bare spots on the uh, paper is you can go in by hitting on the icon that has some uh, control images on it and go down to background and put a gray background on and that'll give it a little more uniform appearance a little finer detail but that's not what we're going to do today so let's uh, do another experiment we'll bring it down And we'll let it cycle as it always does. And this would be the Impressions Impasto 1 image if you're going with the featured presets. Again, you can take and click on the icon if you want to make changes. Uh, To the brush size the volume of the paint the opacity of the paint stroke length Spill. One thing I like about this particular filter is it gives you a lot of control and you're actually creating an original work of art. Even though you're not painting it, you are using your innate ability and talent to create your own personal vision. Okay, so by playing with the adjustment tools in Impressions, you can get a quite different look from what you started out with initially. We'll go back and we'll go into the other presets. Let's go to uh, Let's 
the painting preset. Okay, and what we'll do this time is we will use the watercolor four preset. And you'll see that we get a much different appearance, uh, smoother. The brush strokes are non-existent. Uh, you can see the texture that we've put in previously by using the blend modes. <clears throat> so we'll accept that. Okay, now what I'm, what I'm going to do, this is a filter. I think a lot of people uh, forget when they use impressions that it is a filter. You do not have to necessarily use only the image that you you obtain through impressions. You can take and reduce the opacity of that particular layer and it'll bring out a little more detail from your previous layer and still give some of the effect that you've got in impressions. In other words, you can use it just like you would any other filter available to you in Photoshop or, or whatever uh, filters you have, whether it be Nick, Topaz, or the variety of other filters available online. Okay, this concludes this tutorial. As always, thank you very much for viewing it. Uh, if you get a chance, please stop by my website, barrysart.com. Uh, go through the artwork there and my blog. I would appreciate it, and I would also appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to my video channel. Thank you very much.